Welcome back everyone. Today we're back in Buenos Aires and we're here actually in Chacarita Cemetery. This is the largest cemetery in Buenos Aires and the reason it's so large is because back in the 1800s, 1876 I think, there was a huge yellow fever pandemic here in Buenos Aires and many 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 thousands of people died. And Recoleta Cemetery, the uh, exclusive cemetery up in the neighborhood of Recoleta, where all the very rich and famous uh, Argentines are entombed, they would not allow the, uh, the victims of the yellow fever pandemic to be entombed there. So they were all entombed here. I talked about this in a previous video when we visited here. Uh, back when we visited Argentina during the summer. The reason the cemetery actually exists, or at least the reason why it's so big, is because back in uh, 1871, there was a huge yellow fever outbreak in, uh, uh, in Buenos Aires. Something like 8% of the population of the city died. About 8% 8, 8 of the population died in the yellow fever outbreak and the rest of the cemeteries. They couldn't handle uh, the amount of bodies that they were getting. Apparently it started in San Telmo, which was the neighborhood that we were in. And, and, um, and it spread from there until the point where like, you know, hundreds of people were dying every day. And uh, Recoleta Cemetery, they wouldn't allow any of the uh, people who died from yellow fever to be buried there. And uh, we visited here and found the tomb, the former tomb of Juan Perón and also the tomb of Carlos Gardel. Why are we here talking about this? Well, in order to figure that out, we actually have to go back in time. Back to when we were still in Quito, Ecuador. So, come along for a little time travel and find out exactly what we're talking about in this video. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. Alright, back to the video. Alright, welcome back everyone. Quito, Ecuador. We're out today early, early out today on the streets, and uh, today we're heading to the Centro Historico once again. This time, we're heading there for a different reason. We're going because we're gonna get a vaccine for yellow fever. So come along. So what is yellow fever and why are we getting a vaccine for it? Well, it's, uh, if you don't know, it's a mosquito-borne disease. Um, it can be deadly. It is endemic in lots of parts in Africa and in South America here as well. Now, we haven't actually visited any places where we were like at a significant risk of getting yellow fever, which is why I didn't get a yellow fever vaccine um, before I left the United States to make this trip here to South America. But we actually went to a country uh, where in parts of that country, Yellow fever is endemic, and uh, because of that, we may not be able to get into other countries in the future because we've gone through said country, and that was Peru, the country we were in before we were here in Ecuador. Now, we were in Lima, and in Lima, no significant risk of getting yellow fever. So, if you're uh, deciding to take a trip to Lima, and you're only going to be in Lima, and you're not going to go outside of Lima, then you really don't need a yellow fever vaccine. But having gone to Lima, having gone to the country of Peru, will basically put you on a list uh, of countries that have yellow fever endemic. And it may prevent you in the future from going to other countries. Because some countries require that you have proof of a yellow fever vaccine if you've been to a country where yellow fever is endemic. Does that make sense? Anyway, there's some countries 
that are on my like bucket list for travel countries that I think I might want to travel to in the future where I might I may need this proof of vaccine and lucky for me here in Quito Ecuador from well from some of the research that I've done from some people I've talked to uh, we may be able to get that vaccine uh, free of charge there is a clinic a health clinic down in the Centro Historico where you can go and uh, you can get the vaccine and from all my research it's free so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna get there try and get there as early as we can sort of right when it opens and uh, we'll see we'll see if we can get the vaccine yellow fever is actually a pretty big problem in a lot of places around the world like I said it's still endemic to whole continents and there are tons of countries where certain areas of the country you're at risk for yellow fever. Now, before you'd go traveling anywhere, you're going to want to do some research on the country you're visiting to see if the places you're visiting uh, are, have a, a danger of you like contracting yellow fever and if you want to get a yellow fever vaccine before you go so that you yourself don't contract yellow fever, not just so you can get the certificate to be able to enter a certain country in the future. Now, when you're doing your research before traveling and you go to like the State Department's website to see what the travel advisory is for a certain country, and by the way, if you're not doing that before you go to visit a country, you really should do that. That should be your first, as a, as a United States citizen, um, or really a citizen from any country, your first uh, visit should be to whatever government agency's website issues travel advisories to find out what are the risks and dangers of a certain country that you're thinking about visiting. Uh, but you should also probably visit, uh, in the case of the United States, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, has a website that will give you uh, specific information on health risks for a country. And for, if you're coming from another country, you want to find your Minister of Health, right? Your Ministry of Health website, whatever the department is for the government that uh, concerns public health, and visit them and they'll have a list um, uh, of like instructions and advice for certain countries, what diseases you might risk if you go to those countries, what vaccines you should probably have going to those countries, and reasons why you should have those vaccines. Like for example, uh, one of the vaccines that they had recommended for me before I came here to South America was rabies. And I didn't actually end up getting a rabies vaccine because as I looked into it more, um, more closely, they basically said it's actually only recommended for people who are going to be working closely with potentially uh, rabid animals or people who are going to be staying out in rural areas. Uh, and since I was traveling to cities for my entire trip, it wasn't something that I needed. So that's really, really good information to get before you uh, before you travel, because it'll let you know what vaccines you need to get and also why you should get those vaccines. So you can decide whether or not your specific circumstance um, requires you to get uh, a certain vaccine or not. Down here in the metro station, a few minutes before our train, gets here and uh, one thing I wanted to mention about uh, yellow fever that I didn't think about but it's probably important to think about if you're traveling if you plan to travel is your country of origin wherever you live may be on the list of countries that require a yellow fever vaccine in order to enter the country if you've been to a country where you may have been exposed to yellow fever right uh, which means that you may go to a country like Peru and go to uh, a city in Peru like Lima where in order to go you don't really need to get a yellow fever vaccine you'll be safe uh, going to just the city of Lima without a yellow fever vaccine but because you don't have a yellow fever vaccine you may not be able to get back into your country uh, when you come back so um, Keep that in mind if you are planning to travel to one of these countries that has yellow fever endemic in some of the areas, even if you're not planning to travel to those areas specifically, just going to that country may make you ineligible to re-enter your own country if, um, if uh, your country requires yellow fever vaccination uh, in order to enter. Anyway, we're here at the station 
Ejido. And uh, we got five minutes before our next train. Just wanted to mention that because uh, that's that's an important thing to think about. And um, also, the the good thing about the yellow fever vaccine is uh, it's one of these sort of one and done. Well, not really one and done. You need a booster shot every 10 years. But basically, getting the vaccine protects you completely from getting the disease. Um, it's not like a flu shot or um, like a dengue fever vaccine or one of these vaccines where it like reduces the severity if you should get the disease. It's a, it's a preventative vaccine that will like prevent you from getting the vaccine if you get it. And once you get it, you're basically good for 10 years until you have to get a booster shot. So, all right, so we're here. Centro de Salud, right here across the street. Numero uno. Back behind us about two blocks, Centro Historico, Metro Stop, so it's very close. And uh, looks like there's a little line outside, but from what I know, I think we have to go up to the third floor and we go to the administration office and we register there first, and then we can come down to the second floor and get our vaccine. So a couple things to note here. One, if you are entering the Centro Salud um, health clinic here, you will need a mask that is required to wear a mask to enter. Now, I actually brought a few masks with me, just in case, right? Always better to be prepared. Even though I'm traveling after the, uh, well, the you know what, where you needed a mask to get on and in pretty much everywhere a few years ago. But uh, if you don't have a mask, luckily the little, there's like a little vendor, a couple of them actually, street vendors, we're right next to the Centro de Salud, selling water and candy and stuff like that. And they will also sell you a mask for really like 50 cents, very cheap. So if you don't have your own mask that you brought with you and you need one, you can just buy one from the nice lady here across the street. Another thing to note is I thought that you had to go up and register with your passport on the third floor administration office. That's what I had learned in some research I did. Turns out, I didn't actually have to do that. I asked the security guard at the front, do I have to do that? He said, no, if you need a vaccination, just go straight to floor number two and uh, the area where it says vacunas, which means vaccine in, um, in Spanish. And that's what I did. All right, well, fortunately we struck out. The cent health center, Centro de Salud, is the right place to get the vaccine. But when I went up to the second floor, where the vaccines are, they said they're all out. They don't have any. And I asked, is it just today? Are you getting any more? And they said, well, we don't know when we're getting any more. And they, they actually said, you can maybe go across the street. There are a few um, private, like little health clinics and vaccination clinics right across the street. And they said, hey, go across the street and see if they have it. Went across the street and they said, no, 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 we don't have it. We only have it at the center of health. And I said, nah, they don't have it there. And she said, well, then I guess you're out of luck, basically. So, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to do this while we're here because uh, we're actually not gonna be here for that much longer. Um, but I think our plan B is going to be to get this vaccine in the country where we're gonna be next. And uh, no spoilers, I'm not going to tell you where that is, but um, I did a little research and I will be able to get it there, um, but it will cost a bit of money. And I wanted to try and get it done here uh, because you can get it at the Centro de, Centro de Salud for free, if they have them, of course. So this actually will not be a, a video from Ecuador. It'll be a video from a different country. Well, now that you're all caught up on the story, Welcome back to Buenos Aires. We are here across the street from Helios Salud. Helios Salud, which is a private medical center, health clinic, vaccine center. Anyway, I've been told that this is where we can get the vaccine. Now it's not gonna be free, we're gonna have to pay for it. It's gonna be, uh, I think about 120,000 pesos which is gonna end up being just under $100. So it's gonna be cheaper than what we would get if we were to get this in the United States, but we are gonna to have to pay for it. So let's go across here and see, uh, let's see if we can get it. 
Well, that's it. Done and done. Sitting here actually in Plaza Manuel Belgrano, which is near the uh, the clinic. We're actually in the Belgrano neighborhood. That's where the clinic is. It's uh, Belgrano neighborhood. It's on Mendoza. If you want to get to it uh, by public transportation, you can take uh, any number of buses or you take the green, I don't remember which number or which letter, uh, metro line out to, uh, what's the stop? Jaramento? Jaramento? I'll put it in the subtitle. Anyway, um, that was easy, super easy. It cost uh, 122, uh, 122,000 pesos, which at the current exchange rate, blue dollar exchange rate, uh, is like $90 maybe, about. I don't know, it's kind of hard to keep up with the exchange rate and do the math in my head. Uh, but I'd say about $90, just under $100. And uh, I never really mentioned this in any of the um, videos that we made here in Buenos Aires or in Argentina at all. But uh, the healthcare system in Argentina is actually quite good. Uh, I did a lot of research before my first trip to, uh, to Argentina. And uh, it, it's good. There's a public health care system and a private health care system. And uh, the quality of care is like very high as far as like the, uh, you know, the technical, the equipment that they have and their access to like um, different medicines. And then also like the skill of the doctors and all that. It's very, very high. The only thing is that if you would to uh, do the public health care system, one, you have to have a DNI, uh, meaning like you have to have like a uh, I think you have to have like a, a, a residency here, right? Um, but also there's like a long wait for an appointment for the public health care system because it's kind of a, uh, the system's kind of crowded. It's kind of like uh, a lot of uh, countries where there's a public health care system. The care is, is good and the quality of care is good, but like you might have to wait uh, a while to get an appointment. So you can always go the private health care option if you are here. And um, at that place, Elio Salud, they didn't really speak English, so I had to get by with my Spanish, which, you know, we do. We do all right. But I do know that, like, were you to have a serious health concern and need to go to, like, a hospital or something, there are hospitals um, that sort of specialize uh, in speaking English, right? One of them I know, and it's actually kind of close to, uh, to, like, where we're staying, um, is the Italian hospital. It's like the Italian hospital of Buenos Aires. It's a very old and very famous uh, hospital and I've heard that they speak English there. But There's something to note here from some research that I did before I came to Argentina the first time is if you're in any situation where you need to see a doctor, your best bet is to go to a hospital first. It sounds weird, especially if you're coming from somewhere like the United States, where you don't usually go to a hospital unless there's a very, you're having a serious problem and you have to go to like the emergency room or whatnot. Um, but that's pretty much the primary place that you should go and be evaluated there first by a doctor and then they'll sort of decide where you need to go after that. So especially since you're not going to have a primary care physician if you're traveling outside of the United States and you're traveling in another country um, and there's really no sort of like urgent care centers like there are in a lot of places in the United States to be your first point of contact, it's best to just go to the hospital. So if you're feeling sick, if you sprain your ankle or something, whatever happens, even if it's not an emergency, something very, very serious, you still want to go to the hospital first. And like I said, the Italian hospital is probably the one that I would recommend here in Buenos Aires because they have doctors uh, and staff who speak English. Luckily, we haven't had to do anything like that. The only thing we had to do was go get our vaccine for a yellow fever, which we did. And uh, now that we got it, it opens up basically a whole lot of other countries that we can go to um, because they gave us that certificate. The certificate looks like this and uh, redacted, of course, because there's some sensitive information on there. But it looks like this. Um, I was told that I'm not allowed to fold it, which is kind of going to be an issue because like I pack, I mean, I pack everything up into a backpack. So a lot of stuff gets folded and crammed into weird pockets. So we'll figure out exactly how to do it. But basically like this is going to get me into any country where um, they require a yellow fever vaccine if you have passed through uh, countries that are on that yellow fever list, like Peru, like we passed through Peru. So um, 
Yeah, uh, that's that's good. So, uh, you know, it took us two cities and we had to time travel around a little bit and we had to pay some money to get it, but we got it. We got the yellow fever vaccine and that's the most important thing. So, I think that's gonna be it for the video. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. There's gonna be plenty more videos coming from Buenos Aires and from Argentina, so um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.